Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Stylish Bride, the podcast dedicated to making sure you are dressed, styled, and down the aisle. And today, as this podcast is airing on April 9th, we are preparing to start another bridal market tomorrow, actually. And I cannot believe it's here again. Everyone in the industry is always saying, oh my God, I feel like we just had the last one in October. It sped by. And it's absolutely true. And I calculated it and realized that this is my 30th bridal market. I cannot believe it. And while a lot has changed, a lot stayed the same too. And it's really kind of interesting to think back when I went to my very first round of shows and I was by far and away the only person that was new. There were basically editors of magazines, because, you know, social media didn't even exist back then, and buyers from a select few stores. And that was it. And they all kind of knew each other. And there I am sitting in the back, scared and like, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, today when I have done 30 of them and seen trends come and go and how the industry has changed and things have really progressed over time. When I first started, there were a lot of runway shows. That's kind of how everyone did it, very much like ready to wear. And this market in particular is very interesting because we only have a few runway shows and everything else, it's really presentations and more informal gatherings that you see the dresses on models, but it's not a formal show. I actually really like that format because it allows you to get up close to the dresses and really see the detail in a way that, you know, you can't on the runway. You blink and they're gone. So, you know, by the time you're finished taking your pictures and all of that, you most of the time don't even remember what you saw. But when it's at a presentation and the models are standing there and you can really take your time and look at them, I feel like it's more impactful. So I like that and I'm excited to see a lot of great things. But today, I'm going to give you a little overview of what Bridal Market is because I know a lot of you guys are newly engaged and trying to figure out you know, this whole bridal world that's so different than anything else that you know. And I think the best way to do that is to answer our listeners' questions. So I have asked people to write in and let me know what they're wondering about and what things they want to hear about for Bridal Market. And I'm really excited to do that. This is the first show that I have done it like that, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But before we get started, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to episode 10 that I recorded in the fall, right before October Bridal Market in 2018. And my guest was Alexandra Macon, who's the editor in chief and founder of Over the Moon, which is a blog, and also a contributing editor for Vogue magazine. And she and I really talk a lot about what it is, why it's important, and you know what you need to know. So now let's get into it. My first question is from a listener named Jen in Philadelphia. And thanks so much for writing in, Jen. Her question is, does every designer show a new collection? And I know that this can actually be really confusing because, you know, what we've said and everybody knows that there's two bridal markets a year, April and October. And so how, you know, you would assume then that like in Ready to Wear, everyone shows a new collection, but it's actually not true. There are some designers that show twice and there are some designers that only show once a year. And actually that used to be a lot of big designers would show in the spring and then do small capsule collections in the fall. And everything has really changed in the last several years. It's not like that anymore. So, you know, if you want to know whether or not your favorite designer is going to be showing a new collection, I would definitely do your research on Instagram. It's really interesting. Monique Lillier this season actually debuted her dresses on Instagram two weeks ago before the bridal market has even started and had a trunk show where brides could actually try them on. And actually one of the most popular Instagram posts that I've ever put out there is reviewing the dresses and showing people what they are because my friends at the store gave me a little behind the scenes preview because I work with them so much, which is really nice. So anyway, a designer like Monique Lillier does show twice a year and others really pick So it's definitely different than it has been before, but there are a lot of new things coming out, so you can definitely be on the lookout. Okay, so my next question is from Ashley in Dallas. Her question says, I just got engaged and I'm trying to get up to speed on wedding dresses. 
what should I pay attention to at bridal market? And I think this is a great question because it isn't always self-explanatory what the, you know, new brides should be looking at. And your Instagrams are going to be blowing up with wedding dresses on Thursday and Friday of this coming week. It's, you know, when everything new comes out and every person in the industry is really like focused on what this is and what's going on. And that's really exciting, but you have to understand how to, you know, I guess digest all of the information. So I think that when you're new and just trying to get your bearings, you should use it as an opportunity to learn about a designer's style. And we talk about this a lot on this podcast. Designers have a point of view, obviously. They design for a particular bride. They have a muse. And generally, their collections go back to that idea and they're continuing to design for that woman. There are some designers that do a lot of different things but most focus specifically on one point of view and they interpret it in different ways. So to get an idea of what you like, I would just scroll through and you know use the hashtag bridal market 2019 or the other one is New York Bridal Fashion Week 2019 and you're going to start to see a lot of things. So, you know, that's one really good thing to do. I think that you can also use it as a way to hone in on the details that you love and figure out who's showing them. So a great way to do this is through trend reports and all of the big bridal magazines and blogs, and even sometimes individuals will do a review, which we are definitely going to be doing on this podcast in two weeks and, you know, tell you what we saw, like make it, you know, in digestible bites for you. So it could be anything from, you know, we saw lots of pink or, you know, bows were really big or Watteau trains are back, which of course I'm secretly hoping for. But, you know, all of these different things you'll start to learn about and understand what they mean and whether or not you like them. So you could look at these photos and say, God, I thought I loved a bow, but I really hate how these look. And then you can pay attention to fabrications. So are we seeing a lot of tool and embellishment and, you know, are things going back towards the more classic simplicity? And so you can really get an idea of all of those trends through bridal market. And I think if you are on a tighter budget, what we're going to be seeing are mostly higher end designers where the dress price points started about $5,000, but you can use that as inspiration. So what's great about the wedding industry is all of that really trickles down to better price points and you can get an idea of what's going to be coming into the market a little bit later, but still hopefully in enough time for you to consider it. So it really sets the tone for what we're going to be seeing in diffusion lines and of better price point dresses that are more mass produced. And then the last thing that I love to take a look at is what we're seeing for hair, makeup, and accessories. Of course, a lot of them get very editorial and you know do things that you would never actually do, but there are designers that really, you know, put something inspirational out. And Reem Akra is a designer that comes to mind with this because she styles her shows very specifically each season. And in fact, when I look back at the collections over the years, I can remember which show it is just based on what the models are wearing. So, you know, that's a really interesting thing to take a look at. And again, brides can interpret it and use it in their own way. Sometimes it's a little too avant-garde for an everyday bride, but you can, you know, learn from it. And then other times designers will actually put out jewelry or, you know, put a different shoe than you would think of. And I love that. Like, for example, last season, Inez de Santo debuted a jewelry collection and the pieces were absolutely stunning. There were all of these designer or real stone cages and birds. And, you know, it was very, very beautiful and inspirational. And it was something that was fun to see. So I love taking a look for those details also. Okay, so the next question is from Lindsay in New Jersey, and her question is a great one, and it's, when will these dresses be available? And this is a hard question to answer, actually, because it really varies by designer. But generally, I would say these dresses are for brides getting married more than six months from April or from October, depending on which bridal market we're talking about. But, you know, if you're having a wedding that's in September, these dresses are really not going to be available to you unless it's a very specific particular designer. And there are a few that can accommodate a rush. But for the most part, these dresses will be coming into stores where they have their samples in 
October, November. So right when we're seeing the next collection, these dresses will be in the stores. And this is why trunk shows are really important. And in episode nine, Mark Ingram and I talk all about trunk shows, what they are and why they're so important. But in terms of getting access to a wedding dress that was on the runway, you have to track it down on a trunk show because those samples won't be in stores until October, November. But what you should also know is that even if you can find the dress and see it on a trunk show, it does not mean that you can get it if your wedding is in a tight timeline. So always do your due diligence before looking. All right. My next question is from Georgia in New York. And her question is, what do I do if I see a dress that I love? So let's talk about what you do if you see a dress on Instagram from this bridal market that you love. And it blends a little bit with the last question, but basically what you want to do is reach out to the designer and make sure that the dress is actually getting produced. Because one of the tricky things about bridal market and actually all fashion shows and markets in general is that not all of the things that they put out on the runway and that you see pictures are actually produced. So it can get a little tricky. Some designers have more than others. But, you know, it is not an infrequent thing that I will reach out to a designer and say, hey, you know, my client wants to try on X, Y, Z. And they said, oh, that dress didn't go into production. And it's always like, oh, because all of the images are out there on Instagram and people are seeing them and expecting that they are available, but they aren't always. So the first thing you want to do is reach out to the designer either you know through their website or even on Instagram and check to make sure that it's getting produced. The next thing, and this is the part that goes back to the last question, is that you have to find out about timing because you know there are some designers like right now Oscar de la Renta is running like nine months. So if you're getting married, you know, before January and you see a dress from them that you love, it's probably not going to happen. So, you know, you should just kind of rule that out before even tracking it down. But then if you are okay on timing, then I encourage you to find trunk show dates in your local area. And that's when these dresses will be available for you to try on. Now, remember the tricky thing about trunk shows is that they're the actual runway samples. So you are going to be seeing and hopefully trying on the model sample. And that can be really tricky if you're not a model sample size, which many of us are not. So it can skew things a little bit and make it kind of hard. But so prepare yourself for that. And then if there aren't any trunk shows happening and you just can't find the dress, you can coordinate with a local store that carries the designer and ask them if they can borrow it for you. And a lot of times on a weekday in between the scheduled trunk shows, a designer will send a piece to a store that carries their dresses. So that's a great way of seeing it. Because I think a lot of times brides find a picture, they love it, and they can't get it out of their head until they try it on. So those are some steps that you can take to make sure that you can see them. And the last question, and this is so amazing, is from Jose Villa, our friend and the amazing, amazing photographer whom I love. And it's just so very nice that he wrote in. He wants to know who isn't showing that I love. And this is a great question. And I'm very, very sorry to say that Ellie Saab is not showing this bridal market. And I think that that's for a bunch of different reasons and some restructuring going on on the corporate side, but they are always a favorite and I'm disappointed not to be seeing them. But there are a lot of great ones out there and I can't wait to be wowed and see all of the beautiful new dresses that are going to be available to brides. So thank you so much for all of your questions. I really appreciate it to all of our listeners out there. And I hope that I've been able to answer and clarify a lot of what's going on with Bridal Market. And of course, if we didn't get to your question or you think of something else, please reach out. I would love to hear from you. You can find me on Instagram at The Stylish Bride, and I'd be happy to chat with you over DM and tell you what you need to know. And the next two episodes that we're going to be doing are going to be Bridal Market Designer Overviews, which will be next Tuesday. And I'm going to be interviewing a lot of the designers post-show and getting their inspiration points and talking about their favorite things. And I'm going to compile them into to an episode that you know, goes over all of it and is going to be super exciting. And then the episode after that in two weeks is going to be with an editor of a magazine talking all about the trends that we saw and tell you about all of the behind the scenes and latest trends that you need to know. 
So for now, I just want to say thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. If you know other people that might benefit from this podcast, I would love if you would tell them about us or write a little review so that people can find us more and help us make sure that all of the brides out there are dressed, styled, and down the aisle. Bye for now.